one, ladies and gentlemen, Glenn Sobel. All right, woohoo! Welcome, Glenn. Matt, how you doing? <laughs> you know, it wouldn't be a session or a show without some te technical difficulties. There's always gotta be something. So anyway, as everyone knows, uh, we're back. It's been a while. We've got Glenn Sobel joining us today. This is gonna be all about drums. We also have some extra mics that we're using today. Matt, do you want to do a quick, you know, rundown uh, of what we've got on the, the, what we're using? We've got the Toms with the S25 and the SDC84s and the hats that are not. Some of the other uh, Roswell mics don't do. You guys got me? Audio? So there's a, all right. Yeah, because someone in the comments said they couldn't hear me anyway. Yeah, so we threw some mics from Mike Parts into the mix because Mike Parts has some options that well doesn't yet have. Uh, never seen ever, of course. So we've got some small diaphragm mics. Uh, one of them is called the SDC84. Uh, SDC stands for small diaphragm condenser. This is the world's most original name for a microphone. Uh, and the 84, indicates uh, a, a Neumann KM84 style. It's, it's the circuit that's in the mic. And um, we have a really nice set of uh, small diaphragm capsules. We've got cardioid, hypercardioid, and uh, Omni. People who are familiar with the stuff we've been doing here or with Charlie's channel maybe remember a video, Charlie, that you made um, with the what we call the snare mic. It's the STC84 with the hypercardioid capsule, which has really nice rejection. And then it's got, uh, inside the circuit, it's got a bunch of... Uh, tricks in it that help it accommodate super high SPL. So I think you've got one of those on snare and did you say also on hats tonight? Okay. Yeah, so it's a uh, 16 inch hats today and it's handling it very nicely. <laughs> cool. Yeah, and so the, uh, the other nice thing about that STC 84 is that it, uh, the way the circuit works is it gives you a little bit of audio compression, but not in a really like obnoxious audible way. Like it doesn't sound like you've put your signal through a compressor, but the transients are a little bit controlled, which I think makes the tracks a little bit easier to mix, but you know, we'll see if that comes out tonight. Yeah, so one thing I want everyone to understand about the drum sound before we go any further saying anything, we are completely wide open on this kit. I mean, I'm not, I'm not trying to, to mitigate any of the bleed from the toms. The snare is open and ringy. And I want to plead with everyone to, I know there's going to be some drummers and people out there going, man, make that snare deader. I, 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 want to, I want to sit on that till we get to the track because I, I want to make my case for not always making the snare dead right out of the gates when there's some ring. That ring is going to kind of be our lifeline in this track that we have today of keeping the snare alive. So, so bear with this. There is, a, there is a reason. There's a method to the madness behind there. So it is a big, wide open sound. Uh, and it's very, I, I tell you what, I just got to use those SDC84s and the S25. That's, we, we just got them this week. And Ernesto, I went, what, Monday? 
and a little bit last night, got to play with them, and I'm actually very impressed, very impressed with those microphones. The snare mic, you guys already know I love that thing. I use it all the time. The overheads for today, I chose the Delphos 2 because I've been using those a lot again lately. It is a workhorse microphone. It sounds great. It's smooth. It's probably, of all the mics I have, the most even from top to bottom. It just does a fantastic job, and we'll solo those up in a minute. And then we're doing one other thing that I can't believe I haven't done until this, and that's a stereo pair of Kolaris in the room. And it's really cool. <laughs> really cool. So we'll solo that up in a minute too. But that's our, that's our kit setup. So, and on the outside of the kick, we have the Mini K KD. Now, one thing I do want to point out up front, we are using a, because of the style of this track, we've got kind of a hard hitting track and Glenn's going to be doing some, a little bit of fancy footwork here and there. We, we needed some cuts, so we do have a 421 shoved way up inside that with no bottom on it. It literally is just for the kick. The size of the drum is completely coming from the Mini KD. And that's how I use it when I'm tracking too. It is, it's the beef, it's the fatness, it's the thickness that when you turn it off, you just get sad. So that's what we have going today for the kick, just so we can hear everything. And we do have a hard rock track. So it's a stylistic choice as far as miking and a fairly common one too. Matt, you have uh, anything you want to add to that real quick before we start hitting some more stuff? Dude, I'm just here to hear Glenn I play. Wanna, I don't want to I know. <laughs> Hey, Glenn, you want to do like a 40-minute drum solo and we're just going to sit back and, and watch? <laughs> 40 seconds or 40 minutes? Oh, minutes, of course, you know. I mean, that's about how much time we have left, so. <laughs> I can tell you I would be entertained. But anyway, everyone, Glenn Sobel, I'm sure you already know him, very familiar with him, fantastic drummer. I've been fortunate to know him for a long time. And, I'm, you know, I know the pandemic and everything has been bad, but I'm glad he's in town right now and we've had an opportunity to get him in here to do this for us. And it's gonna sound really good. Uh, one of the big things about recording any good drum sound, man, it all starts with the drummer. If the drummer is in, he's in the driver's seat of all this. Yeah, you can do sample placing and all this, but if you're looking for the essence of a real drum track and getting something that sounds great from the beginning, all this other stuff, the board, the mic, everything is great, but without the drummer laying it down right, it, none of that stuff really matters. We're lucky today we got one of the best in the business. So. Glenn, thanks for doing this, buddy. All right, let's jump in. I'm gonna start with the overheads because every session I do, that's the first mics I pull up because that's, you know, for me, it's really important that that's the kit sound. So I'm going to just mute everything, all the drums, but the overheads. Hey, Glenn, will you just give me, just play a little bit of time with some simple fills and get the crashes in there for me? How about a tom groove? Nice, nice. All right, here's what I like uh, about the Kalar or the Delphos and why I use it a lot. One, I like for overheads, I like how it, it adds to the toms. It has a really nice kind of low mid area. And when you blend that in with the tom mics, you get some really nice depth out of the kit. The other thing is it's, they're not harsh with cymbals. At least I've never had that experience. So they're really smooth. So I can, you can actually pump it in the mix. You could even compress them a little bit if that's the sound that you're going after. And it's the cymbals aren't start going to start breaking down. It has a very nice smooth top end. And I also like that it catches body of the rest of the kit. And it is kind of in my, I wish I had a photo of this. It is in my, you know, not complete, just left or right of the kit. I'm going kind of over the rack and over the floor, splitting the kit that way, which is how I like to do it. Now, cymbal wise, Glenn, what do you have today what do you bring but what what are the crashes yeah 
uh, this is the 19 HHX explosion craft. They're thin, but you know, there's a mis there's sort of a misunderstanding a lot of times about heavy music. You need like thick cymbals, but I disagree. I think some of the thin ones that have more sustain can be really good for this kind of music that we're gonna do here. The ride is a AA medium ride, that's right. And then I took a chance. I brought these uh, 16 inch AAX explosion hats. <laughs> they sound cool. Yeah, but sometimes bigger is not always better, like I was saying with the crashes. But in this case, I think we think they work. Yeah, I like them. And I also like the crashes because they're not overly bright, but they, since they're thinner and a little bit smaller, that I can actually hear your hits. Right. It isn't just a wash of right. noise, there's articulation. You hear the definition. Yeah. yeah. And then the mics on top of that are, are not adding any high end. It's just really natural way of picking them up. If I wanted to, I could easily boost some top end. Now, one other thing I do want to mention, we are using a house kit tonight, or actually several pieces of several house kits. Yes. Uh, it just worked out to be easier. Glenn's a DW guy, but this happens quite often that we're doing sessions and we have a sound or something's up and you got to run in and you're just using the gear. So tonight he's just using... Uh, we're just using some pieces of one of my kits, or like I said, several of the kits. It's a Frankenstein kit, so. But we got the Sabians in there. So, all right, cool. Now, do, give me, uh, same thing, do a little bit of grooving and go to the tom. I'm gonna just bring the kick and the snare in just so we can kind of hear how that adds to the, the, the overall sound with just a few mics. You want some grooving and then a floor tom, dude? Is that what I'm yeah, that'd be cool. All right. So overheads only. There's our snare in. So I kicked the toms on there at the end. Now, one thing, we're going for a fat tone. That was the goal. One thing is it works well with the way Glenn plays. We have a hard drag track, the way Glenn likes to do fills. So we have the floor tom especially tuned in a way that when he's doing some of his licks and fills, they blend well together. I'm not doing anything to any, I have a little bit of EQ on the, the kick drum, that's it. The, the toms, the overheads, the rooms, which we'll get to in a second, the hi-hats, all of that is the microphones only and Glenn hitting hitting the drums. So I do want to go over these these Tom mics real quick. Can you give me that tribal kind of groove? So Tom mics only. That was a that was a terrible cue on my part, man. I would I just got fired from the band leader gig. <laughs> okay, so I did one thing. I, I've been really impressed. I think Ernesto was too when we when we set these up the other day. Is how well two things. One, how well they get the low end with no EQ or anything. What I did there is kicked on a little bit of EQ with just a shelf starting about. I actually don't know what it is on the console. It's right around five or six K, like two DB, and we can get some of that stick attack on the head itself. The other thing I like about this, will you play, um, do that same thing, but do some crashes? Because one thing I, I, I really liked about this is how natural the bleed is. The rejection is pretty good, but the, uh, the off axis bleed sometimes can get kind of phasey or it's not nice. It's pretty natural on these mics. Same Tom type thing with some crashes.
the TV mix, I think I did a two bar phrase there. Uh, so if you notice, at least I, I like how the, the symbols are still very natural feeling in the feeling in the bleed. So when you're mixing it back in, if you're not gonna do some, you know, mute automation or volume automation, or if you're not gonna go cut everything out, it actually blends pretty nicely when you turn the overheads back on. You don't get a sense of, you know, um, a phasiness or that just nasty kind of warbly off axis cymbal sound that can happen sometimes with, uh, with microphones. So I like that. Matt, well, job well done on those puppies. They sound great. Right on. Where's he at? That, no, so so uh, let's uh, remind me what mics ended up on the Tom's S25 on the rack and on the floor? And or on did the you have floor. A, a... Yep. So okay. all that low end, and there's a lot. I'm not even trying to clean up any low mids or anything. I'm letting it all be there. I'm. It, that's all that low end is coming from the S25s. It's great. Yeah, so the S25 is, uh, we're throwing that word around without saying what it is. So that's another mic parts uh, microphone. It's sold as a DIY kit. It's fairly inexpensive. Um, we actually originally made that for um, students. And then we were surprised that a lot of studios were buying it. And I never tried it on Tom's. Um, it was actually, um, uh, we sold a pair to Greg Wells, um, who you might know his name. He's worked with everyone. He speaks at Mixed with the Masters. And um, and he has a pair on his studio kit on Tom's. So it was, and he said to me, this is a great Tom mic. And I said, I'd have to try that. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, and it, it does it does work really well, and it's a it's a fixed cardioid capsule, single sided capsule, um, and that helps it with pattern control, and it helps the off axis uh, bleed coloration, which Charlie talked about. So um, yeah, nice to hear it here in context. Sounds good. Super fat, super fat. Uh, next thing I'd like to go over, we're gonna kind of go through things, and we're gonna do a little bit of this in context, and then we're gonna. But I we talked about these hi hat mics. So the, the SDC 84s, this is my first time getting to use the, the regular, I'm, I'm gonna call it the normal SDC 84, your, and the other one's the snare drum one. And I really like how full they are. And these are giant, high, just play my hi-hat groove for a second. Even with the, the when he's got the open hat, you can hear a little bit of the proximity effect on there, but it's in context, it's so usable. And I may actually pull those back up a little bit higher if we were going to do tons of open. But I like how it's crisp and full and articulate, but not brittle at all. And I'm not, again, I'm not doing anything to it. It's just, you know, decent placement and, and Glenn playing. And there we did one test with them briefly on overheads, and they worked fantastic for that as well. I mean, I'm. I like large diaphragm condensers personally, but I was actually really impressed with how hand they handled the whole kit, um, especially the symbols. So the last thing we have to go over before, no, I'm gonna save that. We're, we're gonna do the rooms last. What I wanna do now is we need some context. I want, to, I want you to start hearing the, the drums and all the ring and the openness. What happens when Glenn starts playing with the track? So let's, let's, do, uh, let's do the A, Actually, let's run the, no, let's just do the A section. Little time. No, I, I won't. Oh, let me loop it. That's why Glenn's in charge. Okay. So just play through it once or twice, and I'll just stop you after we get it. So I'm going to start with everything open, but minus the room mic. So this is just the close mics. I will kill the track. I, Glenn, it shouldn't kill it in your ears. I'm going to kill it on the broadcast every once in a while just because I want you to hear what, how that all that ringing and extra stuff that's going on underneath the kit gets eaten up by the track and why it's so important. So, all right, you ready, Glenn? Two hours.
I did loop it. I, I listened to you, man. You're the boss. <laughs> okay, so you, you hear that once the track starts, all that ringing of the snare drum gets eaten up. If we were to go deaden that right away, once that track comes in, we're gonna start losing that snare. It's gonna start sounding smaller really fast. And even the tom ringing, sometimes I don't mind it. If I was mixing this or we were doing this for an album, I'd probably clean some of that stuff up when we go to mix it. But a lot of that stuff is the life of the kit and most of it, play just that groove again real quick. So a lot of it, the kit is kind of resonating together. It's pretty in, in tune with itself, which is nice, which is nice. You could clean it up really tight. I kind of like the bombasticness of the overall kit, especially for this kind of classic hard rock kind of sound. But my point with the snare is that boom, boom, boom. We need that, that's life. That's not just ring, that's actually life in the inside the track. And one thing I want to mention just about the SDC 84 snare drum version, is it is the, the first mic that I've used that actually helps me also get that depth of the drum. It's getting that low fundamental without having the EQ. You can always get a little snap in there or put a second mic up if you need it and have get some sort of attack, but that mic does such a nice job without having to process getting that low fundamental of the snare, which I like. You know, I'm, I like to have a little, you know, smack in my snare drum sound on the bottom. Let's do... Let's go do the B section, that, that tom groove we were talking about, like a tribal thing. I'm going to loop the B, so we'll play it like twice, maybe. I'll try to do a better job of counting you in. <laughs> if James Brown was here, he'd be docking me $5 constantly. All right, uh, you'll hear the last two bars of A going to B. See, I'm getting it down now. I remember, I'm a drummer, I should know this counting thing a lot better. So the second round, I actually just dialed in a tiny bit of top end, which helped the, the toms cut, but all the low end is there. They're big, they're fat, they're beefy. They would be really, really easy to shape further to really fit inside the track if needed. I dig it. Matt, you still there, buddy? I gotta check in with the boss. Still here. Checking in with the boss. <laughs> what do you think? What's what what you're hearing it what you you liking what you're hearing there? Yeah. How about YouTube? Absolutely. Check, yeah, you know, it. I mean big drums, um huge hi-hats. Yep. I brought them back a little um, bit. I had yeah, them cranked uh, in there. We'd love to see comments uh, from people. All right. Yeah. So I'm, I'm looking forward to hearing the whole track, actually. And I want to hear the room mics, too. Yes, that's what, before we do the whole track, I got, we got to do the room mic. I saved them the last because if you guys have seen in my videos, you know I love room mics and lots of room mics. If I could only record room mics, I probably would. It doesn't work out that way. So we've got a pair of Kolarises. I do not have a photo. I apologize I didn't get that in. But we are a, we're a spaced pair about two and a half feet off the floor. I am not using the pad. I'm not using any of the low cut filters. I like this microphone a lot without the pad on. And I'm gonna let Matt kind of do the explanation of the difference of the Kolaris at zero or with the 10 dB pad. But for me, it's just, you get a little bit of extra flavor with that transformer in there and color with the pad engaged. And I really dig that. So Matt, can you maybe just real quick explain how that works? Um, the pad on the, uh, on the Kolaris. or the filter. I'm sorry. I was uh, typing. Oh no, the pad. Yeah. The pad or the filter, the pad, the pad. Yeah. So, um, so the, the pad on the Kolaris does two things. Number one, it, uh, it's a pad, so it cuts output by 10 decibels. 
Um, but it's also uh, the way the pad is built, it's basically part of a saturation circuit. And the, the, the Kalara sounds the way it does. And the reason people love it is that it adds some even order harmonic content to whatever the input signal is. And the reason we do that is because it sounds really good. And that's in fact, one of the, uh, that so, sort of even order harmonic saturation is one of the reasons people love old tube microphones. And so we did that in a FET circuit uh, for a lot of reasons that I won't go into because I've talked about it here before, but uh, basically what the pad does is it disables that. And so what you get it get then is the same frequency response, um, but without the harmonics. So the pad cuts your output level by about 10 decibels, but it also cuts your second harmonics by like 12 or 14, which means that by turning on the pad on the mic and then applying roughly, you know, 10 or 12 or 10, 10 dB of makeup gain on your preamp, you get the same frequency response, the same sound, the same tone, only minus a bunch of harmonics. So you basically get a, a cleaner sound or a more modern sound. I mean, this, you know, harmonics hit everyone's ears differently and they're, the words used to describe it don't always make a lot of sense. Um, but, uh, you know, what's happening is the harmonic stuff is being sort of subtracted. And so it just gives you kind of a, a well, usually sometimes subtle and sometimes not so subtly different tone, depending on how hot your input signal is. If it's a very quiet signal coming into the mic, then you may not hear any difference at all because a quiet signal won't be pushing the circuit into this sort of saturation region. But on a louder signal, it would be. And so when you flip the pad on, uh, that goes away. Yeah, I, I think a good representation of that when we did with Gabby in the last episode, we did her vocals both ways. And there, especially on the ballad song, there is an obvious difference between the sounds of those two settings. So that'd be a good one to go check out. I'm just, we're pumping it loud in the room. I'm not gonna go out and, and, and change them for this because I actually just dig out sounds right now. I have them lower because I'm trying to kind of control the amount of drum set to cymbal ratio. So a lot of the times I'll do, I'll run some, a set of mics lower or if, if I'm doing something higher, they're probably a fairly dark mic or something like that. But in this case, we put them low, they're wide, they are about, I would say probably about a good 10, 12 feet out in front of the kit, evenly spaced. The kick drum is right in the middle of them. I am, both mics though, I'm not aiming them at the kit because what happened when I did that is it obviously started pulling the snare one direction. So I actually have them pointed to both sides of the drum set. So they're looking on the sides and it kind of evened that out a little bit. Anytime you have a space pair in a kit like this, you're gonna get a little bit of that pull in context, matters not, but I still tried to even it out a little bit. So I'm just going to pull up the rooms only. Glenn, can you give me a little fun? Yeah. And these are not compressor EQs. Tom fills too. One, two, one, two, three, four. Mm. Hey, give me that tribal groove also. All right, hold on one sec. Uh, two, one, two, three, four, boom. Oh, see, that's that bass drum stuff I love, man. All right, I'm gonna pull the whole kit in, but I'm gonna mute the, the rooms again, or I'm gonna turn them down. I'm just gonna gradually kind of bring them up. You notice that it's, it's a pretty uh, even sound, like the kick, snare, and toms all kind of sit well together, and the cymbals aren't coming out and screaming. They do handle compression well, too. And, and I did this a little bit last night when I was just playing with it a little bit, is I set them through my, my dynamites, which I love and adore, and the, it just blows up the room. It's pretty cool. I'm not gonna do that today. But so give me that uh, same tribal thing, actually. No room mic. Here come the room. I'll go too loud.
Give me a regular groove. No room. A one, two, three, four, boom. So you can crank them and it's actually a pretty cool sound, but it, it, just using a little bit I think it's pretty even between kick, snare, toms, all of those things get a little representation in those microphones there to where it adds a little space around the whole kit, but I'm like crazy. And that bodes well for those of us, and I definitely say us because I love compression, but for those of us that like to hammer room mics with compression sometime to get things going nice and big and bombastic, this, these mics will handle that no problem at all. And especially hi-hats, that's one in the rooms that can be a problem sometimes. And I'm going to leave these on for the track. Matt, we have any, um, anything we need to answer? Sorry, I'm looking. Matt's behind me on the screen, so I'm looking back. I feel like I'm yelling. Am I always yelling? Yeah, Matt? so there were some questions about... Uh... I'm loud, right? I'm always yelling. There's some right, questions man. about some of the mic part <laughs> stuff, which I... Uh, at least it's not only at me. <laughs> no, um, it's just me. Yeah, some questions about uh, building some of the mics. You know, the um, uh, the mic part stuff uh, certainly started out intended to be fully DIY, like buy the kit and build it. Uh, but at this point, we do we do and can build any of the kits, uh, you know, for people. So if you don't want to deal with the soldering and the risk and whatnot, uh, most of the products are listed. There's a page for microphones. You can just order them like you would order anything else. Um, just understand that we build that stuff to order so it could take a couple of days. And um, we've been super, super busy. Word has gotten out and we're selling kind of a lot of all of that stuff. So uh, the build queue is usually only two or three days, but for the past couple of months, it's kind of been a week-ish. Um, and we're kind of working around the clock to keep up, but we can do that. So the STC-84s, uh, we can definitely build those. Um, and the snare mic as well. And uh, yeah, so just let me know if you need anything else. And they're great. I mean, I, I will say that, I mean, I know we're working on these things together, but for me as an end user, all these microphones, I use them all the time. And the SDCs now too, as well as those, the S25s, they're gonna be in that rotation for the sounds because all of these mics work so well for so many different applications. I know I could do a jazz thing to a metal thing and I could put those Delphos on the top and I know I'm gonna get a good sound. It's just always going to work. The same thing with that snare mic. You know, the Mini K 47 KD, that is always on the outside of my kick for everything. Sometimes it's more of the sound, like we did with the Iron Point when it calls for it, we can, we can do that. It is always the size of my bass drum, always. I almost never get the size of anything from my inside mics, and I don't even try to. I, I put something in there because I need definition to get through a particular mix or in this case it's going to be it's stereo guitars but the the low end and that thing that makes the drum go this direction that is it's always that that kd that mic is so easy to use and so versatile and and if it needs to be shaped with eq it's really easy to do but it has a great very fast low end response to it out of the gates which i like and that's important when you get double bass and stuff too you know, you won't see me using a, a sub kick too often, especially with double bass, but with that mic, the low end's quick. So that's my, my little rant there. I think it's time, Matt, unless we have anything else we need to answer, I think it's time for the, the grand finale, the showdown, the throwdown here with the whole track. I was trying to think of something fancy. I should just stick to the script. <laughs> Sobel's in there going, oh man, this guy. Glenn, first off, before we do this track, Thank you again for, for taking time to do this, man. I always love working with you. You always sound good and you make every engineer that you work with life easy <laughs> and you work with some great ones. Likewise, brother. Pleasure working with you. Where can we find you online? You know, glensobel.com. What's all your... Oh, yeah. You just type my name into the Google. Oh, yeah. It's pretty easy. Google. Yeah. You'll find it. You know, it's, it's pretty easy to find people these days. And I love the point that you're making about the room and snare. You know, there's two schools of thought. One is get rid of it. Oh my God, it's ringing. And the other is let it ring because it's going to benefit the track when everything else is on top of it. Mm -hmm. It's going to, it's going to fit. Right. And it's always about context, you know, but a lot of the times for this type of stuff, that little bit of ring is a good thing. Yeah. 
And one other note I want to point out, and this is a huge one, and we could start a fight between any two drummers with this one. And I think Glenn knows what I'm going to say. This is how a drummer plays the bass drum. Glenn plays off the head. He is not bearing the beater in there. And that allows us to get a lot more low end out of a drum. It's rounder, it's more open, but he also, the way he's hitting it, it's, you kind of, there's a slap to it. It's, there is no loss of volume with him, but it is a very nice, consistent, open sound. It's not getting choked. You don't hear the beater hitting and bouncing on the head. Right, there's, there's definitely a lot of just fist fights over that. Yes. Exact that exact topic. Look, there are guys that bury the beater and it works for them. Their bass drum mm -hmm. is tuned and muffled accordingly for that technique and they make it work. I come from more of the old school. It's like Bonham, John Bonham. If you played uh, bury the beater on that kind of bass drum, like John Bonham style bass drum, there was no hole in the front. It, end, it wouldn't work. You would get, you know, it, yep. you get the multiple bounce. Yep. I've had this conversation with many people. Yeah. Yeah, so true. Yeah, those bigger drums, it's really hard to do, especially if there's no hole on the resonant head. It's You can't control it because it just flutters like crazy. I personally, I think it's a, it, both ways have merit. They're different sounds, and all this is a, you know, a game of, of colors and sounds. I like the off, the not burying the beater. I buried the beater for years, and it took me about a year to train myself to not do that, but I really liked the sound I started getting out of the bass drum. And I also noticed that when I would change the bass drums that I have here, that I could really start to hear the difference of those kits or those kick drums and a little bit of muffling here and there. And I could really get different sounds to when I was bearing the beater all the time. I didn't quite get that, but it took me a little while to learn. Man, I, I was bound, like I was drunk on a boat. It was hard to do. And I think it's important to point out we're using the hard side of the beater here. Yes. Yeah, you have a pair of DW, are those? It's a 9,000. The 9,000 with the DW, you know, the two-sided beater, and we are using the plastic side. And that, which kick drum do we end up with? The white one? So that has the, is it UV4, EQ UV4, Evans? Yeah, is that what's on there? Yeah. yeah. Which I actually really like that head, and especially on that drum, it makes it nice and full sounding. So, okay, enough. Look, what we came here to do was record some drums, and we're going to do that. All right, I'm going to leave the rooms in a little bit. I'll kind of leave things where they were. All right, Glenn, you ready to go? Here we go, two bars at the top.
Boom. And that's how it's done. Nice. Nice job, dude. That one lick you had, Ernesto and I are just cracking up that you do with the, you get the rims in the double bass thing. Yeah. Oh my Lord, that's I mean, awesome. See, that's the thing, right? I was totally screwing around earlier, like, just, I don't know, not even paying attention. You guys said, that's actually funny and cool. <laughs> do it. And that's when all this, the best stuff happens, when you're not even trying or when you're not paying attention. Yep. Yep, but I love it. You remembered it and actually put it in there. That's yeah. awesome. <laughs> nice. Kit sounds great. You sound great. Matt, how you doing over there? I'm doing. I don't know if you can hear me, but thank you. That was really cool. Appreciate that. What's the next track? Let's do another. <laughs> <laughs> Ernesto, get your guitar out. We're going to write something. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, Glenn, thanks again for joining us. You know, if you guys have any questions, this will be archived. This will be up on the Roswell Pro Audio uh, YouTube channel. We'll probably share it out to all the socials as well. If you have any questions about yeah. the mics, feel free to ask Matt or myself, you know. Yeah, uh, and I, so I should also throw out, this was a episode, sorry, Charlie jumped in. No, this is no. episode five of a uh, live stream series. So the first three, if you haven't seen them, we had a band in called Iron Point. And the first night we did... Uh, this, I don't remember it completely exactly, but we did vocals, percussion, and... Uh, acoustic and guitars. Was it drums? The first? Acoustic no, guitars, acoustic yeah. Guitars, and then the yeah. second night was drums. Mm -hmm. Second night, I think, was drums. Um, and these are all up on, on the website. And that first set of three sessions, uh, we basically, with this band, produced an entire song using only Roswell mics. And then we also downloaded, uh, not downloaded, we, we provide all the stems. And what that means is that we heard like the Mini K47 and Mini K87. In fact, those were the only two mics that we used on the entire thing, yep. plus the KD. And um, and maybe the snare mic too. So yeah, it was four different mics. Yep. And uh, so, but we recorded everything. And so you can hear 47 versus 87 on overheads, 47 versus 87 on vocals, on guitar, on acoustic guitar, et cetera. So all that stuff, there's, there's a giant zip file of all those files that you can check out. So anyway, that was the first three episodes. Episode four was Gabby Gordon, yep. female piano, and vocals, awesome. We did that one, I think, in January. And then uh, this was number five. So yeah, this is a, a series. And the point of this is to try to bring you know you into the studio and, and the studio to you, and so you can check out the mics and um, and really get some uh, good experience with them. So I hope it was helpful. Appreciate everybody hanging out and uh, and watching the stream. Yeah, thanks everybody. We'll be working on some more, and we'll let you know when that's going to happen. Glenn, thanks again. Ernesto, as who's behind me, when you guys see me looking back, it's because. He's at the screens doing all the, he's the one working the hardest today. Thank you for everything. And we'll see you guys all in the next virtual showroom. Take right care on. and happy Thank you. recording.